Ken Ramsey, Bridgeport United Methodist Church, another Take 10 with Ken with a 10-minute Bible study. Thank you for joining us. We've been looking at life's most important questions by looking at the questions Jesus himself asked in the New Testament. Today, I'm going to look at a question Jesus asks in Luke's Gospel, where is your faith? Friends, faith is such a vital aspect of our life. Faith is about relationship, friendship with God, trusting God, surrendering to God. Today, as I start out, I have a good friend of mine, a person I've gotten to know over the past uh, few years, uh, one of, not just one of my favorite actors, but now one of my favorite people, because I know that faith plays an important role in his life, and I'm going to bring him into the picture here, and that's my friend, Dean Kane. Dean, I like, by the way, what a great title, Take 10 with Kane. Take 10 with me. you like that? I, mean, I, I borrowed that for some youth up in Morgantown. Get so. into marketing yes, with that. Yes, indeed. Dean, I know your faith is vital in your life, an important part of who you are. Uh, Tell me briefly about that and, and how important it is for you. Well, you know, I think everybody's journey uh, to faith is their own, and everybody has a different path for getting there. I wasn't raised, raised particularly religious. Um, you know, we would attend church on, you know, some uh, some weekends, certainly the holidays and Easter. My parents would get us out on Christmas Eve so they could hide presents. <laughs> right, under the, right. So uh, my journey toward finding my faith really started as I got into college. When I started to realize, you know, the world is a bigger place than you see it as a child, yes. and uh, that that started my journey into sort of fi you know figuring out what I really truly believe, and then moments in your life certainly make things very clear, right? Um, yes. and, and you have these these epiphanies, and uh, I had a number of them. Whether it was the birth of my son, which was the most I mean it's such a it's almost cliche to say it but it's the most such a remarkable moment amazing it's, gift oh it's the greatest <laughs> gift know. of my entire life it's also been you know pain in the tail too because it's <laughs> tough it's tough being a father and yes I've changed my whole life as a result but he's my favorite human being that I've ever been around and I'm just so proud of him and then having to have him take him on his journey of faith and, and figuring out where things are going there was a time where I had something really big happening it was all happened. I was really aimed for this one moment, and it dropped, and it didn't happen, and I was crushed. And then my then ten year old boy came over, put his arm around me, said, "Dad, God has other plans for you." And there you go. I was just just blown away. Um, so it's been, you know, I don't preach my faith all the time um, just because people don't want to hear it in Hollywood, and, and I, that's their business, and that can be a very private thing, and I respect it completely. Absolutely. But my faith is a very strong part of who I am. God and I have a lot of conversations. Sometimes I think I'm the only one talking. Uh, sometimes I think he's the only one talking. So it goes back and forth, but it's uh, it's an absolutely integral to who I am as a as a person, as a father, as a as, as a human, as a follower wow. of Christ. That's it. That's a great testimony, and your ten year old turned out to be right. God did <laughs> yes, have sir. other plans, yes, sir. and He's using you in a great way. I remember when my son was born, Dean. A friend of mine called me and he said, right when it's right after he was born, he said, I'll give you a million dollars for that kid. <laughs> and I said, absolutely no way whatsoever. Uh, after my boy became 16 years old, I called my friend and said, hey, I want to reconsider the offer. <laughs> so I know it is up and down, but it is a blessing. And uh, your witness in what you're doing uh, here in Bridgeport and with the, uh, with the films and the faith is, is an inspiration to so many people. And it's a, it's a blessing to call you friend. We appreciate who you are. Quick shout out to Reverend Rick and Bishop Sandra, who will be here tomorrow in this church for an installation. Which is so. fantastic. Congratulations. Yes, indeed. Dean, he's going off for better things now. I appreciate, appreciate your time. <laughs> Different things. Your faith. Different things. Not necessarily better. Sir. I got you. I got you. All right. Bless you. <laughs> see you. Bless Take you. care now. Thank you, sir. So the question for you is, where is your faith? Uh, you've heard uh, Dean Kane's testimony. You've heard probably the testimony of other people throughout your life. But the question comes to you, where is your faith? The context of that question for us is actually in Luke chapter 8, verse 22. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples, and Jesus said to them, Let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, Jesus fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up, rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and then there was a great calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? There's the question, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the waves and they obey him? 
Sometimes when we're in the midst of the storm, the one resource that should be so important to us oftentimes gets pushed to the back. Why? Because the storm that we're in takes on such an overwhelming thing for us that we cannot see our way through. Oftentimes, and part of the reason the disciples, even though they'd followed Jesus now for some time, even though they'd been with him, they'd seen some of his miracles. He was on the boat with them, yet they were absolutely terrified by that storm. But you know, that's the nature of a storm, isn't it? I'm talking about the storms of life. They can terrify us. When that diagnosis comes your way, it can be terrifying. When you hear the news that a friend has died, it can be terrifying. When your heart is broke or injured because of the circumstances or situations of your life, it can be terrifying. And because the storm sometimes is so fierce, we lose sight of that one resource that's there. Where is your faith? Another time we looked at the word faith in the scripture and I reminded you that that word faith, pistis, really means a loyal, obedient allegiance, a trust and surrender to God. And isn't that really what we're asking God to do amidst the storm? If only I could learn how to trust him and surrender to him, regardless of how fierce the storm may be, is it possible that I would be calm amidst that storm? Maybe you remember the story. A man was teaching his son who was on the verge of adulthood. And he took him out into the woods and they encountered a great stone in the pathway. And he said to his son, now, in order to be an adult, you have to use wisdom. You have to use all the resources that are available to you to move that stone. Go move the stone. So the boy went over and first he tried to lift it entirely on his own and he was unable to do it. But then he remembered, hey, they've taught me about a lever. So he, he put another smaller rock and he got a large limb and he tried to use the lever to move the rock and the stone and he could not do that. Finally, he tried two or three other things and he was completely exhausted, unable to move that stone and he gave up. And he said to his father, I've used everything. And his father said to him, have you used all the resources that are available to you? And the young man said, yes, I've done everything. And the father said, no, you haven't because you did not ask me to help you move the stone. The father was saying, I am a resource to you. And God is saying that to us. Sometimes we try to encounter those storms by ourselves. Sometimes we try to think we can take it all on. And, and when that's the case, friends, eventually we're going to be overwhelmed. And that fear is going to get the best of us. Notice that Jesus was actually asleep amidst the storm. Talk about being calm when the winds and the waves were howling and beating against the boat. They woke him up, and Jesus wasn't really shaming them by saying, where is your faith? He was saying to them, listen, there's a wonderful resource available to you, and that's me. Just ask me. Surrender yourself to me. Trust me. And I think that's the word that God wants us to hear with regard to this question. Where is your faith? Friends, it's only a prayer away. Asking Jesus Christ to come and dwell in our hearts. You heard Dean Cain talk about the fact that many different events in life can cause us to have those awakenings, those epiphanies of faith. And those different, different events of life, pay attention to them. Even if they're stormy, God is speaking in the storm. He's speaking when you're on the mountain. He's speaking when you are in the valley. He wants you to have that type of trust and surrender, that faith in him every single day. Where is your faith? Friends, simply ask, Lord God, help me to believe. Forgive me when I doubt. Show me the way forward. Nurture me. Protect me. Provide for me. Oh God, I trust you with who I am. And now I will go wherever you lead. Thank you for joining us for this 10-minute Bible study. I look forward to joining you next time.